moving on to the lovely up and coming Icarus. Uh, because I'm only going to be staining the top, one of the key things to bear in mind is I don't want it leaking over. It's like, sure, I could just be careful with that, but I'm going to be extra careful and I'm going to mask off the areas that I do not want the stain. This pretty much ensures that I get a clean line between the stain and everything else. A very important thing to keep in mind is the fact that because this is water-based stain, you need to be really, really careful that it doesn't seep through. And to avoid that, what I am doing is burnishing the masking tape down. Now, where the body meets the neck, there's a little bit of all kinds of different angles. So I need to be careful with those. And of course, if you're doing this vice versa, so staining everything but the top, then of course you would mask off the top. Or what I have done on several several occasions is I've done a stain job and I've masked off a sort of pattern somewhere on the top, which then means that when I remove that masking tape, that remains a natural color. And I actually like doing that quite a bit. Now this guitar has been sanded down to 600, wet the grain a bunch of times. Um, but yeah, this stage is always a little bit awkward. The reason why I'm being a little bit more quiet is because it's taking quite a bit of concentration. It doesn't help that my workstation is a little bit too high for this and a bit too soft as well. So I think I'm just going to time lapse this. There, that portion is now finally done. And it is time to begin staining. <clears throat> now this is going to be a two colored, two part process. A two part process much the same as the orange eight string. But I'm going to do a cool effect that I'm going to talk about as I go. So I'm going to have some water and then I'm going to add some blue stain to the water. Nope, that's yellow. Don't want yellow. I want blue. Where's my blue? There it is. That could have been bad. Alright, so I've now, now diluted my blue down and because I have the masking tape and I don't want it seeping under the masking tape at any point, uh, as I go toward everything that's masked off, I'm also going to go drier with the paper. So it can be wet in the middle, but as I progressively move toward the sides, I do want to remain pretty dry. So here we go. Okay, That's not quite achieving what I want it to do. So I'm going to add some more blue to the mix. Thing is, the issue with the blue that I have is when I got it, it was extremely, how should I put this, chunky. It wasn't a liquid, it was more a paste. So that's made my life quite a bit more difficult. Let's try that now. There we go, much better. So once again, I'm moving from the middle toward the edges. Now as I get to the masking tape, I'm being 
very cautious. I don't want it at all to seep in to the back grain or the back wood. So progressively just getting drier as I go toward the masking tape. Now this top wood is actually oak, which um, is not really used for guitar building like ever. But the whole point, as you've probably seen videos by now, um, the whole point behind this guitar and its twin, Cheeky, or belovedly named Cheeky Caster, was to basically have a pretty unorthodox approach in wood choice. Now I'm gonna go against the way that I've previously taught how to do this. So along the masking tape I'm actually going with the grain just because it gives me a little bit more control over going along the masking tape instead of toward it. Because I really, really don't want it seeping in to, to the lighter colored wood on the back. That would be bad. And again, blending as I go. Thing was with blue, blue and red are very strong pigments. So you have your work cut out for you in the sense that yes, it does provide a strong color at the same time where you overlap will show a lot more because of the strong pigment. It's actually turning into a rather interesting color. I gotta admit, due to staining on on uh, oak, it's turning a bit turquoise even. As you can see, I'm, I'm very careful on the edge. But yeah, if and there, as you saw, I had a little drop. Um, drops can happen, it's no big deal, but you do need to address the drop pretty much immediately. So it doesn't have any time to basically go into the grain and then you'd have a nice little blotch to try and work your way around. Um, with this particular guitar right now, I am not too fussed about getting a solid color, seeing as it is getting sanded back quite a bit. But of course, I'm gonna try and get it as solid as I can. I'm actually really looking forward to what this guitar is gonna look like with the plan that I have in mind for it. Now, with the previous guitar, I talked about how I like to, a lot of the time, a lot of the times, uh, even out or blend everything by going with the grain. Uh, most of the time, I don't see a need of doing that, but if it's such a strong color as this is, I feel like that's just the right thing to do. So once my, oh, that, that was quite a bit of stain there. So once my rag starts looking a little tattered, and torn. Props to anybody who gets that reference. I just used the other side of it, basically. This wood is also ripping my rag to shreds. And yeah, I forgot to mention that I'm just using normal kitchen roll, bog roll, uh, kitchen towel, um, 
I'm trying to think of what Americans and uh, Brits call this stuff, but yeah, just standard um, kitchen paper, really, kitchen roll. Um, the grain is also raising quite a bit, but I am not worried about that at all because it is getting sanded back. All right, now, before I move onwards, there is one part that I must address, which is the jack socket. So I'm just doing that with a brush because the jack socket, um, goes midway through the top and the body on the back. So I don't want the top to remain natural. Alrighty, so that's that for now. We'll pick it up after it dries. Okay, so this is when things are gonna start getting a bit interesting, to say the least. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some 1200 grit, wet and dry, and I'm gonna use it dry. And I'm gonna go for a sort of, sort of burst effect. Um, this is, this technique that I'm gonna use is something I picked up on while watching uh, Jeff Kiesel's, so Kiesel Guitars, live stream on uh, Facebook. And he did this with a lovely, lovely, black topped guitar so uh, ever since then I've always wanted to try it so here goes nothing and I'm gonna try it out so first things first I want everything to kind of be sanded roughly the same so that's straightforward and it's just you know getting all that minuscule raised grain evened out. Now the reason why I'm doing this by hand is the fact that it is, you know, 1200 grit. It's not going to change the shape all that much and it just gives me a little bit more control over what I am trying to achieve in doing this technique. Uh, this isn't something I've done before. So I am actually really looking forward to uh, seeing what comes of it. Now, <clears throat> that is the base of what I want to do. Now start fully going into it, I'm gonna take a piece of 600 and I'm gonna work my way from the middle out. So the idea here is that I am going to have a lot more color on the edges of the guitar instead of the middle. I'm starting to wonder whether I should actually go to a lower grit, but we'll see when we get there. Or we'll see in a bit. So I'm taking this 600 all the way to all the curves. And now I'm going to start working the middle. I really don't know if, it's good, if, if this is going to work, but thankfully it is just stained. So I can go back and redo it if it's not to my liking. I really wish I had some 400 right about now, but I'm fresh out. So this will have to do. <clears throat> it's just going to take a little bit longer. So you're starting to see kind of what I'm going for here. I'm trying to kind of feather it out toward the edges a bit so I don't sand the edges as far back. This is interesting to say the least, but I think slowly but surely we're getting there. I'm gonna move over to the 1200 now. Give me a little bit more control over the feathering. It's somewhat looking like 
key point here is to kind of take a few steps back every now and then and see if there's areas that need a little bit more attention. There, for example, there's kind of a harsh line there. Like I said, this is something new that I haven't tried, but I thought would be cool to add in this tutorial as a sort of thing of like what you can do with stains. Now I'm gonna do a once over with the 1200. And I'm leaving the very, very edge, the darkest color. All right, there's the somewhat burst effect. But now, first, get rid of all the all the dust. I usually do this with just the nitrile glove itself because um, it picks up dust pretty well. If I had an air pressure hose, I would definitely use that. Not in my apartment but I would use that if I had a workshop to do that. Going behind the camera to kind of have a look at it as well. I'm going to tilt it just a bit so you can actually see what it looks like. It's interesting, it's different. Um, let's just see what it looks like when we apply the secondary color. Like I said, I'm actually pretty excited about this. The original idea for this was to go, was just to go for a solid green, but then I saw Jeff Kiesel using this technique and I had to try it out. Here it goes. Nice, one funky color. This is, this is just plain good old green that I am adding on top of here. Same green that I used in my review of this stain. I'm just more wondering how the burst effect is going to come through, but we'll see. Too early to tell as of yet. But yeah, same process. Just literally moving, moving from the middle toward the edges and as dry as possible when I get up to the masking tape. The burst itself was very subtle to begin with, so we'll see if it shows up. I tried to avoid calling it that earlier just because I didn't know how this was going to turn out. But seeing as I've used the phrase now, I might as well keep on using it. The thing is that because this stain blends into itself. I'm also dragging some of the blue pigment around on the surface. So that might be reason why it's not showing up as well. But I do like this color. The color itself is really nice. But uh, yeah, the burst did work. It's just extremely slight. So I think I might go and reinforce that just a tad. So I'm going to go ahead and add a very diluted blue. To the mix, let's see what we get. Making sure that my rag is very wet as well. A little bit of stain. That's a lot of blue. So now, instead of moving from the middle toward the edge, I am moving from the edge toward the middle. Using kind of a circular motion to rub it in. OK. 
camera side so you can actually see a little bit better what I am actually doing. Somewhat burst type effect. I'm just going to go ahead and blend in areas where you can see the overlap. And blending in overlap is just easy. You're basically rubbing it away. Here we are. All right. I think that turned out pretty okay. Even though it was a bit of a hassle. Now that the stain has dried, it's time for me to remove the masking tape. You can see if it's seeped through onto the back. Looks very promising so far. Sorry, that was my phone. Okay, there is a little bit. Exactly where I thought there would be. It's probably a little bit more under here. Nope. But I do need to refine that edge. Oh yeah, that looks great. Just need to fine tune that. Nothing on the neck, nothing on the fretboard, we're all good. There we go. We've got a little bit over here as well. So, I'm going to address that issue right now while I have the camera set up. Basically, all it is, is just taking either sandpaper or a fresh new scalpel blade and use it pretty much as a scraper. This will work really well. It lets you just finesse. And the thing is that because this is just splooge, it hasn't actually properly seeped into the grain, which is a good thing. And if you can, try and go with the grain. So you're just pulling that excess stain right off. And to be fair, I'm still going to be going over the other parts of this guitar with some very fine grit sandpaper before putting on the oil. Probably 600, so that should even this out quite nicely. I'm not doing that just yet because I want to avoid the risk of the stain spreading. So yeah, slowly but surely just scrape away all that excess stain. When we get some end grain, that's annoying. That's a bit more tricky. To remove. But then you can just grab some sandpaper and you're pretty much done. So, all that staining is now done. I'm gonna put that over there. <clears throat> and what we're left with is a solid single color orange and then a two, two colored somewhat bursty type feel. Well, it's not really a burst, but it's like a two color, two part type deal. Uh, I hope you found this tutorial informative. Inf I hope you found this in tutorial informative, uh, helpful, useful, at the very least entertaining. And uh, I hope to see you guys next time for another tutorial coming up. There will be one coming up on oiling guitars, which is going to feature this and its twin. Uh, so that's going to be oiling a natural finished guitar and oiling a guitar with stain. Then there's going to be a lacquering 
DIY, home DIY type lacquering process with this guitar to do with spray cans uh, on your, in your backyard or your balcony or wherever. So, keep you guys posted.